So here we have a graph of force versus distance for a certain spring. Uh, in summary, we can use this graph to find several things. We can find the slope on the graph to figure out the spring constant. We can use that spring constant to figure out the force for a certain distance that the spring is stretched or compressed. And if we'd like to find the elastic potential energy, we just find the area under that line. So let's look at first determining the spring constant from the graph. So to do that, again, we just find the slope and find slope. You choose two points. So I'm going to choose 0, 0 where this apparently intersects and this last point over here. So this is 0, 0 and this is 5, comma 50. So to find the spring constant we take the slope and the slope is going to be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 and so y2 is 50 newtons because we have to include the units minus 0 because we start at 0 divide that by x2 which is 5 meters minus 0 so we calculate that out 50 divided by 5 is going to be 10 newtons per meter and that is actually our spring constant K. What this tells us is that it will take 10 newtons of force to stretch the spring one meter. Now to find the amount of force to stretch the spring two meters we can use this equation. Force is just K times the distance. So in this case K is 10 newtons per meter, and the distance we want to stretch it is 2 meters. And so the force to stretch at 2 meters will be 20, and the meters cancels out, newtons. You could double check this on the graph. Graphs aren't as accurate to read, so I wouldn't recommend going off the graph if you can use this equation. Uh, but if we wanted to stretch this thing 2 meters, it looks like it is about 20 newtons of force. Finally, use the graph to determine the total amount of elastic energy stored in the spring when stretched to 4 meters. So to find the total amount of elastic energy, you find the area under the line. Now it is tempting to find the area under the entire thing, but we do not want the entire thing. We just want to 4 meters. So what that means is here's 4 meters. We want to find the area under the line up to there. So that will be just this triangle. So the area is going to be one half the base times the height because it's a triangle. So one half of the base, the base is four meters times the height and at four meters we're about 40 newtons. So half of four is two and 2 times 40 is 80, and we get newton meters, which ends up being joules. So our amount of elastic energy, our elastic potential energy, is 80 joules.